Um, what separates this album from the last one? About three and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> what, what happened with the last one? Um, basically, I think it was too different from what people were expecting me to follow up the hard line with. And, um, you know, you have a choice, I guess, if you, if you, if you're truly aspiring to be a true artist, which, you know, I have been from the beginning, you can either go down the safe path or you can always try to follow your instincts and your heart. And sometimes if you follow the safe path, sometimes there's more guarantee that you're going to get immediate returns, but not necessarily in the long run. If you follow the, uh, the path of your heart and your instincts as an artist, that's more of a risk that you're taking. But I think at the end of the day, you, there's kind of more peace within myself regarding what I feel I'm doing as an artist. Yeah, does a label ever try to tell you what you should do? They don't play that. No. Yeah. Not with me. <laughs> when you were young, you described yourself as a nerd? Yeah, yeah, I used to get beaten up a lot and stuff in school. That was good. I mean, it, even like, uh, even girls used to beat me up in school. Huh? <laughs> there was this one time, um, you know, you know, like growing up, I guess, where I was growing up at the time, that, that's not like the biggest thing in the world because um, some of those girls are like harder than men. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but there was this one time when I was in the seventh grade and there was this girl named Ainsley, it was a white girl, and she asked if I would come and to her karate class because she felt I needed it. And uh, hmm. I remember once, I was in there for a month and we had to spar. And um, she, she, she kicked my butt pretty bad. And, uh, <laughs> when, that, when that got back to the school, I, it, it took me a couple of years to live that down. Because, I mean, it's one thing, you know, you're growing up, you know, black and a black girl kicks your butt. If a white girl kicks your butt, that's. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it took me a while like, to live that one down. I pulled this quote because I, I thought it was interesting to talk about. A lot of people say this, but they never say it publicly. Uh, and the quote was, any black male act appearing in America has to emasculate himself. Prince has to pretend to be bisexual. <clears throat> Michael Jackson has to pretend to be asexual. Would you go into this? Well, first of all, I, I said that about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I will discuss that. But one of the things to bear in mind is that I think the beauty of getting older, I'm 31 now, mm -hmm. is when you're like 25, you, you think you know everything. And in fact, you know nothing. When you, th when you get older, I think the beginning of wisdom is realizing that you don't really know much. You know? Um, but what I meant by that is it just seems that if you follow the trajectory of, of when I say black acts, I'm talking about the ones that have ch achieved that really mass public acceptance uh, in the way that very few have. I think if you look at those, ones within music, they have tended to be ones that didn't have this very strong overt um, black male sexuality that in some way it was either, um, I wouldn't say compromised because I think Prince is essentially, I don't, you know, I don't think Prince is bisexual, but I think essentially that's what he is. And I think he's comfortable with that. And in fact, it takes a lot of guts to be that when mm -hmm. you're that different from what the norm says you're supposed to be. But I think if you look at them, if you look at you know, Prince, Michael Jackson, and the ones that have achieved that level, they've either been kind of more amorphous, mm -hmm. or they've been someone like, um, like Lionel Richie, who I think you would see, I think people have a certain feeling for Lionel more as a family member, you know, mm -hmm. a relative or something like that. But the real kind of you know, whip it out and stick it in people's <laughs> face type of... Uh, situation at that point hadn't really come out and in fact i remember saying to the british press that one of the things that i like most about seal mm -hmm. seal's success was the fact that that's the first time that someone in a long time had achieved that level of success that was that dark skin mm -hmm. and that was that kind of uncompromisingly masculine so i think you know progress has been made yeah you're going to do another number for us yeah. and um we're going to have the comedy of henry cho uh, and we're going to talk about, uh, or at least introduce the lady with you yes. in this next number. So, so we'll wait. All right. Okay. We'll be right back with Henry and Terrence.